brace yourselves as the minions are set to return to the big screen with the release of Despicable Me 3. I'll just get another loan from the bank. They love me. The anticipation's high, and many people are excited to see the return of Gru's wacky and famous sidekicks, the minions. Despite their popularity, though, there's a lot of information about the minions that people keep getting wrong. We're here to set the record straight and reveal all about these yellow minions. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It takes two seconds, and you'll be able to get more awesome videos like this one every day on your homepage. Minions are voiced by multiple people. There are countless numbers of minions in the Despicable universe. You'd think that with that many little critters running around that they'd have a fair amount of voice actors handy to supply some unique voices. You'd be wrong. No matter who your favorite yellow troublemaker is, whether it's Kevin, Bob, Stu, or the rest of the Minion Squad, they're all actually voiced by one man. No matter if it's for any of the Despicable Me films or the standalone Minion movie, all of the little critters are voiced by Pierre Coffin, the co-director on the movies pertaining to the Minions, including the latest installment, Despicable Me 3. When we say he voices all the minions, we mean it, by the way. You may be thinking that he only had to do a few dozen voices for the films, but you'd be sorely mistaken. Bottom. When it came time to supply his voice for the highly anticipated Minions movie, Coffin actually had to voice 899 different Minions. Talk about committing to the role. Time will tell if he'll one-up himself when Despicable Me 3 hits theaters on June 30th. Are you as excited for the return of Gru and his Minions as we are? What is it? What do you smell? Minions were always designed to be cute. Okay, cute may be subjective here, but you know what we're talking about. If the Minions entered a monster fashion contest, you bet they'd finish in the top three when compared to their competition. They're fun, mischievous, and full of personality, and their popularity is evidence that people love these yellow creatures. But they weren't always going to be this way. As baffling as it might sound, the original design for the trademark creatures was going to be heavily inspired by orcs. Yeah, you know, those hideous looking creatures found in the Lord of the Rings and Warcraft what about them? They're fresh doesn't have quite the same appeal as the minions we've come to love, eh? In an effort to make Gru, the protagonist of Despicable Me, more sympathetic, the creatures were redesigned. One way to do that was to surround him by incompetence, as Pierre Coffin stated. So they were completely changed from brutish orcs to the trademark yellow minions that we know and love today. So while you're watching Despicable Me 3, try to imagine the minions as orcs and ask yourself if the series would have done as well if the minions weren't as cute. Probably not. Hey, Kevin! Eh? The boss in England? Minion language is gibberish. If you were to ask us to translate what the minions were saying, we'd honestly come up pretty short. For many people around the world, the minion language sounds like complete and utter nonsense. We can see why many would think this, as their language sounds like someone picked a few random words out of a hat and tried to make a sentence out of it. Uh, like cucaracha? You'd be pleasantly surprised to learn that not only is the minion language understandable to those in the movies, but that you could actually learn to understand them completely too. Just about all the words in Minionese are taken from other languages around the world and compiled into something new. For example, Bapple is simply apple, and Paratu is Spanish that roughly translates to for you. Of course, gelato is known to many of us as a type of Italian ice cream, and Korean and Russian words have also been integrated. The minion's language may not be very elegant or as intricate as most languages on Earth, but each word that the minions speak can actually be translated into English. So if you're feeling dedicated, you know what you can do this summer. Just please, for the love of bananas, don't speak Minionese during the movie. <laughs> There are only a few minion models. Close your eyes and imagine all the different and unique minions you've seen over the course of the two Despicable films and the Minion spin-off film. How many different variations of the yellow troublemakers did you think of? If you said a few dozen, or maybe even a hundred, then you're sorely mistaken. When it came time to start the promotional campaign for Despicable Me 2, the poster showcased 10,400 individual minions. Whoa! Where's Waldo's gonna look like child's play compared to looking for any one particular minion on that poster? When designing the minions, animators would use pre-existing templates for such things like hair and eyes and combine them to create a new minion. There aren't too many different templates, only five options for hair, for example, one being bald. So after a while, these incompetent troublemakers start to all look very much alike, resulting in 48 possible combinations. We are uncertain if it's an animation limitation or perhaps simply a weird part of minion genetics, but one-eyed minions are rarely tall. <laughs> 
no, no. Oh, sorry, Mio. Wow, harder than I thought. But that shouldn't stop you from trying to find one when you watch Despicable Me 3. Um, the thing is, crew. I've had an offer of employment elsewhere. Minions came into existence through engineering. So yeah, where did the minions all come from? Did Gru or another evil mastermind end up creating the minions in order to do their bidding? Certainly sounds like something you'd find in an evil mastermind playbook right after the chapter on building an outlandish headquarters. Contrary to this belief, however, the minions were not in fact engineered or created in a lab, but actually evolved from a single-celled organism much like us. This is pretty interesting as the minions' behavior seems tailor-fit for someone like Gru and one would assume that he actually created the Yellow Troublemakers. Hey, hey, please? Kevin, Jerry, watch the girls for me, okay? Dave, Stuart, come this way with me, come on! To learn that the minions have been around for thousands of years certainly is interesting. Not only have they witnessed great moments in history, but it seems that they've not gotten any more intelligent than their Stone Age counterparts. In the short film Orientation Day, we actually learned that the minions came into existence thanks to a single strand of mutated DNA, which then in turn evolved into a single-celled organism. From there, it was all downhill as incompetence and shenanigans ensued. Ah! Minions can only be seen in their movie in Despicable Me. Minions first made their debut in the 2010 film Despicable Me, which saw them as the loyal and goofy henchmen to the criminal mastermind known as Gru. The lovable yet slightly moronic Yellow Critters became an instant sensation with a lot more screen time in the sequel and eventually getting their own spin-off film, as well as becoming the official mascots for Illumination Entertainment. But if you want your Minions fix, that's the only place you're gonna see them, right? Wrong! There are actually 10 Minion short films out there for your viewing pleasure, including such titles as Orientation Day, Panic in the Mailroom, and Mower Minions, the latter of which was actually released theatrically along with the hit movie Secret Life of Pets. Mower Minions is actually the first and only short film to be released on the big screen, but we're sure that there'll be more to come in the future. When they aren't up to no good in their respective short films, the Minions also kicked up a storm a few years ago with their very own video games. These titles included Despicable Me the Game, Minion Rush, and Minions Paradise. Minions were original designs not inspired by any pre-existing material. The Minions are one heck of a recognizable brand at this point. It'd be really hard going into any specialty store and not see some kind of promotional material, clothing, or even food with the Minions slapped on it. Despite how ingrained they are into our modern pop culture, the Minions actually aren't original designs. Just like many creations, the Minions were heavily inspired by their contemporaries, and in this case, the Minions are in good company. So just who was the main source of inspiration for the Minions? Why? It was the Jawas from Star Wars, of course. When you hear these space scavengers talk, you can totally hear the early foundations for what would become the Minion speak. Okay. No, no, draw! Aside from those junk dealers, the Minions also found inspiration from the Oompa Loompas from the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory film. Taking into account that these lovable Minions have a fascination with their benevolent leader and enjoy singing and eating, it's not too crazy to see how the Oompa Loompas were also an important source of inspiration for the Minions. Crossover anyone? An argument with these three present would certainly be hectic, that much is for certain. You usually don't see that in bunnies. All minions are good. Okay, they're good from a certain point of view, but at the end of the day, the Minions are still the mascots for the Despicable franchise and overall, some decent creatures, despite being slightly incompetent and moronic. Even though we're well accustomed to the Yellow Minions, you may be surprised to learn that despite the good intentions of the Minions, not all of them are good. Unlike the Yellow Minions, who evolved from a single-celled organism into the Yellow Troublemakers we know today, the Purple Minions were designed with one sole purpose, to be evil. <laughs> Thanks to the PX41 serum, a regular and fun-loving yellow minion will become an evil minion, otherwise known as a purple minion. These evil critters were designed to be indestructible, so you can imagine the level of trouble that these guys get into. They're immune to common weapons like guns, axes, and even flamethrowers while also being able to withstand explosions. They also have a certain love of devouring everything in sight. Much like their original yellow counterparts, they do have a curious thing for bananas. Evil minions made their debut in Despicable Me 2 when El Macho hired Dr. Nefario to make a serum. Uh, politica masala? <laughs> masala? Uh, Evil minions were created by simply changing the color. You might be wondering to yourself, why purple when watching Despicable Me 2 and seeing the evil minions do their thing? They're an impressive and quite frankly terrifying lot. But purple doesn't exactly scream evil now, does it? These guys captured me! 
So how come these particular set of minions weren't black, red, or even slime green? Purple seems like an arbitrary choice when you think of it, almost as if the animators picked a color at random and ran with it. While this may be the case with some costumes or designs, it's not the case with the evil minions. The purple was quite deliberate. Can you figure out why? The answer is quite simple, actually. While the original minions are yellow and are the characters we're supposed to root for, the evil minions are quite literally on the opposite side of the color spectrum. So not only are the two different minions on different sides, but yellow and purple, good and bad, are complete opposites color-wise too. Unlike original minions who were inspired by Star Wars and Willy Wonka, purple minions found their inspiration in the Looney Tunes, when Tweety Bird would drink a potion and turn into a scary monster. Have to warn him! And fast! <laughs> Minions are harmed by cold temperature and a lack of oxygen. You'd think that with the minions being cellular beings that they'd be seriously harmed or killed if they were to make an adventure into space without any form of protection. No matter how wily someone like Gru is, you bet that they're gonna have some sweet spacesuit to keep themselves alive. Perhaps they're too stubborn, or perhaps their cells knew that they'd eventually get up to no good, but the minions can't actually be harmed in space. Now there's a mutation that would be pretty sweet to have. When you think about their special ability in terms of their everyday Earth situations, the minions have quite the amazing amazing talent. Since they're safe in space, the minions are also exempt from any form of damage due to arctic-like temperatures and can also survive without oxygen. This means that if they really wanted to, they could go swimming with penguins and be completely fine. With this in mind, you can bet that at some point in history, the minions definitely served some master who had a lair in the coldest regions possible. Because old masterminds always had outlandish bases. Plus, we can totally see the minions goofing off with some penguins. Sadly, there wouldn't be any bananas for them, which is why they obviously had to relocate. If this continued any longer, the minions would perish. That's all for now, folks. So, were you told any of these lies about the minions, or were you led to believe any of them? Which ones were they? We know many people are getting excited for it, but are you going to check out Despicable Me 3 in theaters? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to give this video a like, and don't forget to click that subscribe button for more content from CDR.